a very warm welcome to you. My name is Matt, and it's my absolute pleasure to have you join me tonight in what I'd like to consider the Arc de Triomphe of a trio of cheese. Arc de Triomphe because two of the three cheeses are of French influence. And the Arc de Triomphe because it stands alone. It's an iconic view to the world. Pretentious, perhaps a little bit. But what we have in store for you today is perhaps the most extravagant and most delicious cheese offering you likely experience at any point in your life. Now, if you're like me and consider yourself something of a cheese connoisseur, I think you're in for a real treat. Before we begin, let's pour ourselves a glass of sparkling water. San Pellegrino. Sparkling water is uh, an acquired taste, I believe. But when drinking San Pellegrino, I think it's acquired for you. Now I'm to understand from our reservation, this isn't your first tasting consultation. Now, while the trio is one of our smaller ports, it's designed in such a way that less is more. will be served in addition to our partners at the Fine Cheese Company. And they provided the crackers for our little ensemble tonight. Extra virgin olive oil with a dash sea salt that will provide the foundation for our tasting this evening. Quite a plain, unadorned looking cracker. Some might even say unremarkable. And our friends at the Flying Cheese Company focus purely on a flavor profile and providing the most luxurious accompaniment for a cheese board possible. Now, if you cast your eyes over your own board, For this point, we have our olive and sea salt cracker. Behind, we 
the most appropriate little chili gem. We'll get more into that later. The first of the French inspired cheeses, the apricot Wensleydale. And the apricot is something of a staple on our boards, even shrinking down to the trio board. And while Wensleydale isn't traditionally French, this is actually made with a sheep's milk. And the interesting thing about sheep's milk is actually that it's considered healthier than the cow and goat alternative. Better for lower cholesterol. Next is the Manchego, beautiful little hard cheese, full of earthy notes, and quite a, quite a bold statement to the taste buds. Finally, our only non-French cheese, it's something rather special, close to my heart. This is a Dutch blue, a Dutch blue. It's aged for nine months and it's quite typical of a blue cheese profile, but underpinned with a delicate citrusy that I think you're very much going to like. Finally, Flown in specially, white grapes that happen to be a red color. Very easy on the taste buds. Sweet but not bitter. I would recommend trying one or two of these while moving on to the next cheese. Okay? Now, if we have room and time, I've also prepared a rather special dessert. One I think you are going to appreciate. The jelly that I mentioned. Lime and chili. As spicy as it might sound. Absolutely delightful. Charming in its own way and will bolster each of the cheeses in a rather unique manner. Okay, I think we have prolonged the introductions enough. I invite you to join me on a culinary journey. Let's begin. We'll start with the Dutch Blue. Perhaps the strongest of the three cheeses but it introduces itself in a way that uh, isn't typical. And for me, that is one of the most interesting parts. And you can have your own method. I'm concerned. They taste good. You're probably doing it right. Mm. 
as mentioned, a much softer introduction than a typical blue. It doesn't have the bite, but it does have that citrusy undertone. And what you're tasting is an aged creamy, semi-full-bodied cheese that, while subtle, at least comparative to its Danish cousin, doesn't shy away from those high notes, that almost bitterness that blues are associated with, and coupled with the foundation of the olive and salt. It leads to this beautiful recreation. And the reason the Dutch blue is such a cornerstone of our trio is its ability to shock, but entice. Let's try another. This time we'll introduce a little. your teaspoon just a little not too much just a little smearing of our lime and chili Etiquette commands that we take small bites, savor each of the tastings. But sometimes, fortune of sampling. Now I hope you would agree that the introduction of the lime and chili creates an entirely new flavor profile, almost unrecognizable from the prior cracker. And it melds together and we spend weeks months in some cases, curating our boards for moments just like this. Flavor, the palate almost waxes itself. A new lease of life. Traumatic, yes, but True nonetheless. And we savor it. And then we say goodbye to it. I encourage you to try one of the grapes. seeds just to make our lives a little bit easier. Of course, 
I will add the touch blue to your back. <clears throat> In all the years I've been leading these tasting sessions, in the trio offering, nobody has ever declined to include the Dutch. Quite a remarkable cheese. But if I do say so myself, aided quite heavily by the lime and chili. Excellent. Would you like to move on? Good. Next, we'll introduce ourselves to the Manchego. And this cheese, in my opinion, is perhaps the most surprising of the board. So let us slice off a generous portion. Now, it's a little bit crumbly. I don't want to give you any forewarning. I would exclude the rusk. I wouldn't uh, include it in your first bite. You can't eat the skin of the cheese, but I wouldn't recommend it. Enjoy the cheese itself. Mm. An absolute taste sensation. Quite a mature taste that lends itself to, a, as I mentioned before, a more earthy profile. But you notice after a few seconds, you're met with something new. Something almost creamy, which is unusual for a hard cheese. But the Manchego has its own way of, of charming you. Has its own way of impressing upon you. Let's try it again with the lime and chili. Now, this time I went for a slightly larger wedge. And just a little touch, and I mean a small amount of the chili jam here. even less than you used on the Dutch. And try and get your cube in a single bite. Really, quite magnificent. Surprising. I've tried this cheese perhaps hundreds of times, and still, still I find it surprising to me. Its reach in that wave, that 20, 30 second wave that comes settles nicely on the palate. 
simmer it. And then it's gone. Really, really quite marvelous. And for a hard cheese, as I said, that creamy, if I would liken it to another food type, a little bit off the wall, similar to sea urchin, which might sound uh, unsavory, unsettling perhaps, but sea urchin is known again for its very creamy quality, a little bit of saltiness to it. Um, not fishy by any means, but just that earthy, creamy taste. Quite beautiful. And again, typified with the chili. It'll be included in your bundle, of course. 400 grams it is. It's a lot of cheese, but I can't blame you. Help yourself to a grape if you'd like. And before we move on to our third and final, the French Wensleydale is an intriguing addition to the board. We thought the prior cheese had charm, subtle but charming. We thought the Dutch was bold and commanding. The French Wensleydale. The French Wensleydale introduces a new dynamic. Something that is a little bit unexpected. And the apricot Well let's let's explore exactly what it tastes like. I'd encourage you to cut off a generous portion. And this, of course, is a much softer sheep's cheese. And should really completely catches me off guard. The apricots, instead of adding a sweetness that you'd expect, adds a dry, almost wooden texture, which in words should be unpleasant, but instead Combined with the French Wensleydale, we're left with this seemingly epic and endless array of flavor. And it only works because it's shapes and it's creamy. Now the carbs and fats inside sheep's milk are much smaller, far easier to digest. This becomes more apparent as you're chewing and eating. It feels like a lighter cheese. Because it is. Now let's revisit with the chili and jam. Now 
Now this time around, I would encourage you to be a little bit more, a little bit more precarious with the jelly application. Perhaps dangerous isn't the right way to describe it, but adding chili and lime to a cheese is always a little bit risky. wooden flavor turns into a wood smoke flavor and it just covers the cheese in an entirely different flavor and it's very very interesting because it's a complex taste this time around and of the three cheeses the Wensleydale is by far the most complex cheese tasting and perhaps one of the more complex you're ever likely to experience. But so delectable. Really quite beautiful. And not everyone can understand that. But we savor it. We move it along. Of the three, which do you think was the most memorable? <laughs> Unsurprising, but always uh, pleasant to hear. The French Wensleydale is really uh, in a league of its own, priced appropriately, perhaps, but understandably so really quite a what an exotic cheese masterfully recreated and aged to perfection okay now if you take a moment i can present your dessert we don't always compliment the trio with dessert so this one's a little, a little smaller, but filling nonetheless. If you just lift off the covering in front of you. What you will find here is a Swiss farmhouse cook cinnamon roll. The generously portioned cream cheese is actually made with a Finnish cheese and it has a sweetness and a sticky quality that makes for the ultimate dessert now I would suggest you just cut a little triangle and join me in what will likely be the tastiest, most satisfying, homemade, farmhouse baked roll you've ever tried. It cuts effortlessly, belying its uh, chunky nature. Now these are twice baked, but they quite literally melt in the mouth. The cinnamon is apparent, but not overbearing. The finish cream cheese is just 
so sweet that one bite would never be enough. Now the dough itself is light and it's aired and aired and aired. So although it looks quite dense, and as you can tell from it quite literally falling apart in your mouth, it's cooked effortlessly. Now the cream cheese is folded with vanilla pods and dusted just a little bit of cherry liqueur giving it a heat that again complements the body of the dough I will add it to your basket and please don't stop by my account. Really the perfect ending to a fantastic little trip, the trio. Thank you for the kind words. And of course, we always look forward to your visits. In fact, of all our regular clientele, I can tell you appreciate what we do, our presentation style, our mirrored eating approach more than anyone else and it means the world to me and to us I will have your order prepared before the evening is done ready for delivery or collection tomorrow morning we will include an additional 250 grams of the French Wensleydale, as a token of our appreciation. <laughs> it has been my honor, and I must say, there's something lifted off your shoulders. Happiness that 